Okay, so as I said, this is a very important condition going forward in the course. So we're going to spend some time playing around with this equation, modifying it a little bit, and if possible, simplifying it. So let's try and do that. Okay, so let me write this down one more time. Okay, so let's take this part, okay, and let's play around with this a little bit. So, et by et plus one, let's write this in this form. Okay. And then this can be further expanded into writing this e t plus e plus e t minus e t divided by e t. Oh, it will make there make sense very quickly why I'm doing all of this. Just bear with me. And then what we can do is separate them out, and what we get here is one plus. E t plus one e minus e t divided by e t. Okay. So what we effectively end up with, uh, if we go back to this equation, equal to okay, and it's plug this in. So what we have here is uh, this divided by 1 plus e t plus 1 e minus e t divided by okay. So the question might be why? Why are we doing this? Uh, the expansion, what we did going from here to here to here to here. This is just simple arithmetic, okay? Uh, simple algebra. It should be clear enough to everyone. The question is why? Why are we doing this? So let's break down what we have. This is, of course, the domestic interest rate that we have. This right here is the foreign interest rate, whichever country we're talking about. And this part right here, look at the look at what we have. This is the expected rate of appreciation or depreciation expected rate of appreciation of the domestic currency, right? So effectively what we have is domestic interest rate will be equal to the foreign interest rate divided by 1 plus the expected rate of appreciation of the domestic currency. Uh, now, if we play around with this a bit more, uh, you guys can check out the uh, further workings in the appendix. Uh, I'm not going to expect you guys to memorize it, so I'm not going through it right now. But what we end up with is uh, IT, which is the domestic interest rate, which is not equal to, but approximately equal to the foreign interest rate, which is IT star minus this ET plus 1E minus ET divided by ET. This here is another important issue. Now, first of all, this is called the interest parity condition. 
this is you know also the same thing this is also the interest parity condition all we've done is modify this equation a little bit to arrive here so we are going to for most cases we are going to be using this equation but it is important for you guys to figure out the derivation so i mean where did we start the derivation from from here uh, starting from here step by step we constructed this equation from there we arrived at this equation and then we arrived at this equation now as far as application is concerned we will be using this equation uh, but also uh, as far as derivation is concerned as far as theory is concerned it is important for you guys to know uh, everything that's happened before okay all right so let's move ahead Now suppose let's think of Bangladesh and India again. Okay. So in Bangladesh we have IT. Uh, suppose this is three percent. In India we have IT star. Suppose this is six percent. So in India we have a higher interest rate. So at first glance, it might look like it makes more sense to invest in India because you get more money back. But that is not the case, right? There is more things to take into account, which is, of course, if we want to invest in Bangladesh, first we have to take our uh, taka, we have to convert it to rupee, then we have to invest it in India, earn the money, and at the end of the day, take that rupee and then convert it back to Bangladeshi dollar. And that is our return. So we can't tell anything just by looking at 3% and 6%, right? That is why this equation is important. For example, uh, even if there is over here, what well, there is a difference of 3% between Bangladesh and India, right? However, suppose we expect Taka will appreciate by 5% over the year. Now what will we do? We know in Bangladesh we get 3%. In India we'll get 6%. But this year Taka will also appreciate by 5%. Now, should we invest in India? Uh, no, it doesn't make sense because although there is a gap of this 3%, once you invest in India, that Indian rupee, uh, the opposite of this is to say uh, rupee will depreciate 5%. So even though you are earning this extra 3%, you're earning it in rupee, that rupee is going to lose 5% value. And then at the end of the year, when you convert it back to Taka, you will see that you're getting less money. Okay. Uh, so that is the significance of this equation. Okay. It tells us that we need a parity between both interest rate and exchange rate. We can't just look at one thing and try to decide uh, where to invest in. It doesn't just have to be about investment, okay? Let's think about vacation. You're planning to vacation uh, from Bangladesh. You're planning to go to India. Uh, now, what you know is, let me write this down. E will increase. So, what that means is that Taka is not will, let's say E has increased. 
So that means nominal in term in nominal terms, Taka has appreciated. He has decreased. But in real terms, uh, Taka has depreciated. Remember this formula? E equals to E P by P star. Suppose here's what's happened, okay? Uh, exchange rate has gone up. However, what has also happened is that price level in both countries have gone up. Let's think of them as inflation, okay? Remember when I told you guys to read up on GDP deflator? There has been inflation in both countries, but inflation in Bangladesh has been relatively small, but inflation in India has been quite large. As a result, this whole thing has lost value. So what you see is even though the nominal exchange tells you that uh, Taka has become stronger, so you should go on vacation to India now, because when you convert Taka to rupee, you will, you will uh, get more rupee now than you would have before. But the problem with that type of analysis is that you're not looking at the price level in the country. So true, initially suppose with 100 Taka you would have gotten 75 rupee, but now because the nominal exchange rate has gone up, now from 100 Taka you're going to get let's say 90 rupee. So that means that uh, by spending the same amount of taka, you have more money to spend in India, you have more rupee to spend in India. So it looks like you should go on a vacation to India. But when you arrive in India, because of high inflation, you see that what you could have bought for 75 taka last year, this year costs you 100 taka. So even though in terms of exchange rate, you're getting 90 uh, to get 100 rupee, you will have to spend more than 100. And so you actually end up spending more money. And so you see, we have to keep an eye on everything. We have to keep an eye on nominal exchange rate. We have to keep an eye on real exchange rate. And of course, we have to keep an eye we have to keep an eye on the domestic interest rate. We have to keep an eye on the international or the foreign exchange rate. These are all important, all four of this. Okay, and that is effectively at the heart of this chapter. Okay, that is the end for this chapter. Mm. But yeah, keep in mind these two examples that I gave. Uh, this first example of when you're deciding where to invest, which country to invest, you can't just look at the interest rate. You also have to look at what's expected to happen to the exchange rate. And this, like when you're deciding to spend money in another country, you can't just look at the nominal, the nominal exchange rate. You also have to take a look at the price level, what's happening. And so effectively, you have to look at the real exchange rate. Remember, this is the real exchange rate. So think a bit deeply about these two examples. Think about the derivation of the IPC. And I think uh, that should be sufficient. Okay, so that's the end of this chapter.